Hey everyone, this is Grant, your friendly neighborhood OpenShift team member. In today's video, I wanted to show you the new OpenShift plugin that we've been working on for IntelliJ. So I have a brand new IntelliJ 2018.3.5 installed. So I'm going to go ahead and start that up and we'll look at how to install and use the plugin. And as you can see, I don't have any current projects right now. So I'm going to check out from version control and I'm going to use git and let me pop over to my github account and I'll pull down a project real quick. So I'll go to github.com slash gshipley and I'm going to go over to the OpenShift Evangelist organization to get a project that I've been working on. I'm going to be using the Wild West backend project today so I'm going to clone that one. Go back to Intel IntelliJ, paste that URN, and I want to open this project, allow access, and we'll close the tip there, and we can see that I have my Wild West back in checked out. So now that I have a project locally, I want to actually download and install the OpenShift plugin. So I'm going to click on File, and then Settings. And then I'm going to go to the plugins. And what I want to do is actually search the marketplace for the OpenShift plugin. We can see OpenShift Connector by Red Hat. So I'm going to go ahead and install that and accept the warning there. And you can see this is hot off the press here. This was released March 8th. So I'll go ahead and let that install. And I'll restart the IDE. And we'll start coding here and take a look at the plugin. Now that the plugin has been installed, we'll go over to IntelliJ and we'll notice a new OpenShift tab in the top left hand corner. So here's my project source code. We can drill down and, and look at the various methods here and, and classes. So I'll open up the API controller and let me make the font a little bit bigger here. Okay, so let's go over to the OpenShift plugin tab and we can see that it's going to pull in all of the clusters that I've been working on. And so by default, it pulled in the console.techdope.io, which is the local cluster that I use in, in most of my videos. So what we want to do is actually deploy this backend code out. So let me go ahead and click on New Project, and we'll just call this Grant Backend. And that's going to create a new project on the OpenShift cluster. And we can see that it's listed there. So now we want to create a new application. And we'll just call the application backend, hit OK. And that's going to configure the application. Now we need to create a component. So if I right click on backend, I can select on new component and it's going to pop open a dialog for me. So I'm going to call this backend again. The source type I can do local or git. So I'm going to use local. For source, if I click on browse, it's going to allow me to select my project. And then I need to select the component type. We want to use Java, and we'll use Java 8. I'll click on OK. And we can see in the bottom that it opened up a new Odo window, and it's giving me the status of my project and my application. So it's going to go ahead and copy those over. If we go over to our OpenShift instance, let me log in to OpenShift on TechDope, and we should see a grant backend project that IntelliJ created, and we can see that the backend has been deployed. So let's go back to IntelliJ, and we can see that it's currently building the component. So we could do a lot of things at this point. We could right click on our, or expand our backend, and look at our actual component. We can create a URL for it, we can add storage, we can describe it show the logs, follow the logs. We can link components and services together. We can open the component up in a browser. We can push, we can watch, and we can delete. Okay, the component has been pushed. So let's go ahead and create a URL for this. And it's going to ask me which service port I want to expose. Now this is a Spring Boot application, so I know that it's using port 8080. I'll click OK on that. And now we have a URL Okay, so let's go ahead and push our source code out. The way we do that is we right click on the backend component and click on push. 
And this is going to take the source code files from my local IDE, push those up to OpenShift, and go through the source to image process to build and deploy that application. We can see that happening down in the window below. Okay, our application is set up and running. So now we can right click on it and open in browser. And this will open up in the default browser on your system, which is Chrome. Now we get a white label error page here. Why is that? Well, this is because this is a back end controller. It's a REST API. So I've defined one REST API here called slash egg, which just says every game needs an Easter egg. So if we go back over to our URL and put in slash egg, we can see that from the IntelliJ IDE, I was able to quickly deploy this application to OpenShift. So let's go back and make a change and actually walk through the process on how to do that. So I'm gonna just change this egg endpoint URL to say the change from inside of my IDE. I'm gonna save that. And then I'm gonna build my project just to make sure that I don't have any compilation errors or anything. Okay, that looks good. Now we just want to push this new version out so we can just run push again, which by just clicking on the component name and running push, it's gonna go through that same process and build that component out for us again. And we can see that the Spring Boot application has been started back up and everything should be good. So let's go back to our web browser refresh the page and we can see a change from inside of my IDE. So that's pretty awesome. Everything from right inside my IDE, I didn't have to install any command line tools, just using the IntelliJ plugin. The other thing we can do on the backend component is actually watch for changes. And so then I can just start coding and maybe add some exclamation points here, save that, build my project. And the plugin is going to look for any changes on my local system. And when it notices changes or a new build, it's gonna push that up to the OpenShift cluster. All right, that's just a quick look at the new OpenShift connector plugin that we've written for IntelliJ. Hope everyone enjoyed the video.